This is Late Night Help. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your help. Hi, I'm Mark Allen, and along with the insane Daryl Wayne, during the next two hours, we're going to talk about some really interesting things, from how to pick a bed, uh, we'll be talking with Robert Clancy, and we're going to be starting our show today with a very important issue. We're going to be talking about botanicals and how they can really change our lives and talk about uh, a foundation, uh, the uh, uh, Beljansky uh, 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 Foundation, and what it's all about. Our guest is Sylvie, uh, Sylvie Bel- <laughs> Beljansky. Uh, she's the vice president of the uh, foundation, and it's based in New York City. Sylvie uh, uh, has uh, studied in Europe. She was born in New York. Wait till you hear her wonderful voice. And uh, she uh, has a law degree uh, and has been admitted to the French Bar. Sylvie, welcome to Late Night Health. Hello, Mark, and thank you for having me today. Oh, our pleasure. Uh, let's talk about what the Beljansky Foundation is and its its mission. Sure. The Beljansky Foundation is a 501c3 charitable organization based in New York City. And his mission is to study natural, non-toxic answers to cancer and other chronic diseases, and uh, very importantly, to share the knowledge uh, that it is accumulating with the public. There is nothing proprietary. We share everything on the website of the foundation, which is uh, belgiansky.org. And did you, you started the foundation yourself? Indeed, I did in uh, 1999. Uh, I was was one of the first things I did after arriving in New York. Uh, I wanted to uh, carry on with the legacy of my late father, Dr. Mirko Beljansky. He passed away in 98 in uh, really dramatic uh, circumstances in France. And there was, uh, I grew up, you know, I grew up seeing how those products can make a difference uh, with people's lives, and I wanted really to have the opportunity here to uh, continue this legacy and provide uh, scientific recognition, which could only be done through the work of a foundation. Holistic medicine, integrative medicine, medicine, healthcare based on botanicals, is this the way of the future, do you think, rather than big pharma? I don't think big pharma is going to go uh, anywhere, anytime soon. Uh, but uh, I think there is room for, for both. Historically, uh, every, uh, every I mean, medicine was uh, based on plants. As Socrates said, I mean, several thousands of years ago, uh, let food uh, be thy medicine. Uh, when uh, when Christopher Columbus uh, came uh, to the to discover the states, uh, he uh, loaded his boat with oranges because or the, the sailors knew that oranges uh, were good, a good way to avoid scurvy uh, and demineralization, the long trip at sea. Right. Uh, however, uh, since the 19th century, there has been uh, the advance of chemistry and uh, then patent laws. So medicine has become something completely different and uh, it has brought also uh, new things to the picture. I mean, there are now uh, new, new ways to treat people that were not available uh, before the advent of chemistry. I, was, I think there is room for, for, for both. It should not be either one or the other. I, ag- I agree with you. Holistic medicine. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think that there is room for, for both, and I think it's important to know that that it can work together. I think that a lot of the people in the, in the holistic area uh, don't mind you know, the idea of working together. I know that I've talked to many medical doctors and people from Big Pharma, and they, they, they're they not as in favor of it because, you know, vitamin C, which you can get from an orange, 
uh, you can put into a capsule or a tablet, and you can make a little bit of money, but you can't make the kind of money that Big Pharma tends to want that isn't found, at least to my knowledge, in, in the botanical area, in, in the, in the uh, plant-based medicines uh, and foods that are becoming very popular here in the 21st century. Would you comment on that? I, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, the, the, but the only way to make big money is uh, with patents. And you can only patent an in, a new invention. So you have to invent something that nature has not already invented. So you have to tweak a molecule in order to make it new and patentable. But uh, a tweaked molecule doesn't mean a better molecule. And you end up with uh, some very often with a lot of side effects uh, and toxicity that uh, are not so much present in the natural compound. Let's talk about your dad. He's, he's considered a pioneer in botanical medicine. Uh, he was a biochemist. Um, he, uh, he passed young. Uh, 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 well, my father indeed was a PhD in molecular biology. Uh, he uh, worked uh, at the Pasteur Institute uh, most of his career. He was originally from Serbia, but he came uh, to Paris to finish his thesis, and uh, he got his, his PhD at the Sorbonne, and then he was offered to stay, to stay in France and join the Pasteur Institute. And he was one of the first uh, scientists uh, to look at uh, the effect of environmental toxins at the level of the DNA and how they can induce cancer. And then he had the idea that if nature came up with carcinogens, it also came up with anti-carcinogens, natural anti-carcinogens. He just had to look for them. So he created a test that he called the Oncotest to search for those molecules and he was able to find a number of very interesting natural molecules which are able to do exactly the opposite of a carcinogen. Wow. And they are natural, selective, and non-toxic. And at the same time, your father ran into some, I'll call it political problems. I mean, he, was, he treated uh, uh, Francois Mediterranean, uh, the former French president, um, uh, who I believe credited him, your dad, for extending his life. Um, but he, he ran into some political issues. Yes, absolutely. It's difficult to, you know, to, to, to uh, be in contact with, like that with, with uh, political people without getting, you know, sometimes burned when you are not ready for, uh, when you do not belong to the political world. What happened is that uh, Mitterrand uh, was advanced, uh, diagnosed with very advanced prostate cancer uh, when he was already as, in his second term of, as a president. And terms uh, were, at the time, seven years in France. Uh, so the Official surgeon opens the president and sees that the, the cancer has spread ev everywhere and said the president is not going to finish his second term and the, the country should uh, get ready for uh, early elections. But it is a French story. So Mitterrand, of course, had a mistress. And uh, the mistress knew of a very good doctor who was famous for his very good results on prostate cancer. So um, he, she urged that doctor to, came, uh, to come to the French White House and uh, see Mitterrand. And this doctor, of course, had those good results because he was using products stemming from my father's research. So that's how Mitterrand uh, ended up taking uh, my father's products and was, against all odds, able to finish his second term, uh, to leave the White uh, House uh, Palace called the Elysee in Paris 
uh, walking, not on a wheelchair. No, he was really doing doing very well, and he even survived uh, several uh, months after that. Uh, but, uh, but 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 you know this this story uh, uh, really infuriated a number of people who had taken you know the pos- official position that uh, we should call for uh, early elections. Wow. Uh, so they lost faith, and then there was a revenge. And they they sent a SWAT team to destroy my father's laboratory, and oh. uh, he was uh, in, uh, indicted, and uh, and he, he did not get to jail. But he was, I mean, he's, it was really the end of his life that they completely. We're destroyed. we're out of time for this segment. Hold on, we're going to do some more. Uh, our guest Sylvie uh, Beljansky, uh, the vice president of the nonprofit Beljansky Foundation in New York, uh, to celebrate Natural uh, Sources' 20th anniversary and the partnership with the Beljansky Foundation. Uh, there's a big symposium for healthcare professionals coming up in December. Uh, we invite you to find out more about that. Go to beljansky.org, beljansky.org. And we also have, in the next segment, we'll talk about uh, 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 a bill that's uh, being uh, uh, introduced or has been introduced in the uh, in the House. Uh, more coming up. Don't go away. This is exciting stuff here on Late Night Health. Join us at latenighthealth.com. Are you being audited and do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The tax doctor is here to help you negotiate a lower tax bill. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts. But you can stop these IRS actions. The tax doctor will fight for you using industry secrets that can stop any IRS actions, eliminate penalties and interest, and reduce your past tax bill. So you pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call the tax doctor now for a free IRS audit emergency review. 800-663-5107. 800-663-5107. 800-663-5107. That's 800-663-5107. If you or someone you love suffers from drug addiction... Now is the time to utilize your private health insurance PPO plan. If eligible, receive up to $30,000 or more in substance abuse benefits with low or no out-of-pocket cost. We are the National Treatment Network, the premier drug and alcohol treatment referral service operating 24-7. We help connect you with facilities nationwide that accepts PPO private health insurance for substance abuse. If you have PPO substance abuse coverage and you need immediate admittance to a medical detox or residential rehab treatment center, call us now. Call our live referral helpline today. The call is free. This program is not available to Medicare or Medicaid customers. Call 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. That's 800-296-1252. 